The PR and print format commands, this time on Hacktip. Welcome to Hacktip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Shannon Morse, and today we are learning all about two different commands. That's it, PR and print format. So PR, which is spelled PR, is used to paginate text, which later becomes useful if you want to print text in a specific format, since it includes page breaks. So it's simple, but it includes lots of options for printing to physical printers or even PDFs. Take this example over on my computer. If I take cat tech thing pics, you'll notice that it's just a really long list of all these different devices that I've reviewed on TechThing or my co-host has reviewed himself. So I see that I have this very long list of tech products. Now I'm going to type in a command with PR. So PR, tech L, and I'm gonna start this one off with 35, tech W, 60, and then type in TechThing pics and hit enter. Okay, so it doesn't look that different, but you will notice there's all this white space now in between every few lines. So why is that? So let's go ahead and break down that command. So first off, we have the PR right here, which is the command that we're talking about today. So PR formats the text for printing with pagination. So it makes little page breaks in between a certain amount of lines. Tech L is the next part right here, and then I put 35. So this tells the terminal to give each page a length of 35 lines. That's why you have all that white space in between 35 lines. Then we have tech W60. So right here tells the terminal to give the width of each line 60 characters. And you'll notice that the output also has a header on each page with a document name and page number. So if I scroll up just a little bit, you'll notice that it says tech thing picks right here and page 16. So you know automatically this last page is 16 pages and it also gives you a time code for when this happened, when you created this document. Now, of course, I am seeing a lot of standard output, so I could just pipe that to head to just see the first page of info by just adding a pipe and then head to the end of that command, so super easy. Now, to take that a step further, you could then print to your printer with a couple of different commands. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I'll show you what they look like. So the first one would be LP stat tech A, and that will list out any kind of known printers that are on your network. And then after that, you could type in LPR tech P, and then type in your printer name. So if our printer is called Hack5 Printer, for example, on the network, then I could type that in, and then it would print out the document. So both of these are going to send documents to a printer or to a PDF uh, documentation. Now, I'm not going to go into details on Hacktip about how to print to paper because I like to save the trees, but if you are interested, there's a really great book on this, and they have a whole chapter on it. It's called The Linux Command Line, which is one of my personal favorite books on the subject. I'm not affiliated, I just love the book. All right, so moving on, we are going to go ahead and get into our next command. This one is print F right after the break. IT people, you know how it is. When all of those alerts and tickets light up your monitor like July 4th fireworks, you are not being productive, you're just stressed out. No mere mortal can analyze all of those alerts and respond to all of those tickets. But luckily, I got some good news for you. You can immediately reduce all of that noise with Moogsoft AI Ops. Moogsoft AI Ops is an algorithmic IT ops platform that reduces your IT alerts and tickets by up to 99%, and that is guaranteed. Moogsoft AI Ops platform integrates with all of your existing IT tools, and Moogsoft's patented technology correlates events into actionable work items called situations, so that you can focus on tackling the stuff that actually matters to your job. So in one case study, a company was experiencing a lot of alert fatigue, they were dealing with lack of context, thousands of alert tickets, all sorts of stuff like that. Moogsoft helped with reactive approaches to incident response tickets by enabling time to value, easing the integration of ITSM tools and existing monitoring, and increasing that quality of event correlation across multiple tools. They saw a 33% reduction in mean time to restore in the business. With Moogsoft AI Ops, you can reduce your IT alerts and tickets by up to 99% right now. Visit moogsoft.com to get a demo. That is M-O-O-G-S-O-F-T.com, moogsoft.com. 
We are now back with print format or print F. This command has been used a ton on previous hack tips as well as some episodes of Hack 5, but I was thinking back about it and we've never really gone into detail about what printf or print format does. So printf is super useful for creating different kinds of arguments. It does not a step standard input though, keep that in mind. Printf stands for print format, obviously, and it is used often in scripting. So <laughs> that's why I'm including it. So to give you an example, I'm gonna go ahead and type in an example on my computer. And at the end, I'm gonna type in Sailor Moon, and then I'll hit enter. All right, so what in the world is going on here? This command uses print format to type out, let's format this sailor, and then let's format this moon. So it's assuming that sailor moon is the argument, and there's two separate arguments there, since it's two different words, and it applies a formatting type. So in this case, that percentage sign S, and then that backslash N means that it's a string with a line break at the end. Now let's try this again to show you an example of what happens. So I'm gonna type in sailor percentage s, I'll use the same one, is my fave. And then I'll just do a backslash n to end that argument. And I'm going to put that in parentheses and start it with print f. There we go. And I'll end it with moon Mars and hit enter. Okay, so in this case, the format continues after that percentage s for string, so it compiles that first argument moon, and then it compiles the second argument mars. So what we end up with is sailor moon is my fave, sailor mars is my fave. Who's your favorite sailor scout? I'm curious, comment below. There are a whole bunch of different formats that you can use as options to print format. So for another example, I could take a look at how each format option changes the argument as they change through the different options. So with this one, I'm gonna go ahead and start with print f again. You always start with printf, just like any other command. And I'll start it with this different option, percentage %d, percentage %f, percentage %o, percentage %s, and that's an o, not a zero, keep that in mind, percentage lowercase x, percentage uppercase x, and I'll end it with a end to that string with a little line break. And I'm gonna use the same number over and over again so that you can see the difference when I hit enter. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six different options in here, which means it's gonna look for six different arguments. So I have 26 written six times. Okay, hit enter. All right, so there's obviously a lot going on here with the standard output, but I'm gonna go ahead and break it down for you so you get each and every one of those different arguments. So first off, of course, we start with printf, and that's how it's always going to begin. The first argument that we have is this D. D tells printf to format 26 as a signed decimal integer. So we just received 26, so nothing special there. Then we have F and that tells it to show a floating point number. So this is going to be 26 point and then a bunch of zeros after it. Then we have zero and that one shows you an octal number. So the octal version of 26 is going to be 32. S again is the same one we used previously. This formats it as a string. So it straight up just takes 26 and formats it as 26, nothing special there. Then we have X, lowercase x tells it to format as a hexadecimal using lowercase, and then the uppercase x tells it to use uppercase instead. So we end up with one A here with lowercase a, and then we end up with an uppercase a at the very end. So that is all six of my different arguments, and then it ends it with that new line break. Now, if you use two percentage signs together, that would tell print format to print a literal percentage symbol, and that's it. So there's nothing really special there. And then the N of GIN makes that new line. Now I could use, instead of a new line, I could use a backslash T for a tab instead of a new line. And then there's this whole thing with these things called conversion specification components. So these must be listed in a specific way for them to actually work on the argument. So for example, I'm gonna type in a really long line and then I'll break it down again for you. So I'll start with print F and I'm gonna end this with eight 26 arguments. Five, six, seven, eight, hit enter. All right, it looks like that worked. 
So to break this down, we're gonna keep it on my computer here. The conversion specification starts with the percentage sign as usual, and then it has a flag, then width, and then a precision marker, and then the final format. So to explain, the percentage is self-explanatory. That's the same thing we've been using for a long time. And then the flag, this can be a few different things. So the flag can either be a hashtag, like you see right here before that lowercase x, or it can be a zero, in this case, I have a zero right here and I also included a zero before the 5.5 F argument. Uh, it can also be a plus, a minus, both of those are at the end so we have plus D here and minus D and then there's also the width. So this is a number and it's going to specify the minimum field width for an argument output. So in that case, for example, I have zero and then six. Six would be the width. And then precision point, which is a floating point number. So in that case, I have a point right here, 0.5. Breaking that down even further, in my example, the percentage 06D, the first one right here, tells it that it will be formatted with a leading zero and a minimum width of five. So in this case, that leading zero with minimum width of five means that we're going to have four zeros with a minimum width of five there. Next up, we have this percentage 05.5F. That means that the number is formatted as a floating point with five decimals and a field width of five. So if I look at the output here, it says 26 floating point with an output of five. So I have five after that percentage, if that makes sense. The zero, the S, we've already covered those, so I'm not gonna cover them again, along with the capital X and lowercase x. Now we have the plus and minus D right here at the end, right there and there. The minus is just gonna simply left align the formatting, so with that minus D, you don't see much of a difference there. And then the plus 26 means that it is going to add a plus positive number to it. So you're going to see that plus sign before your positive number. Whew. Okay, so that was a lot of formatting to cover. I realized it was a lot of information. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that with just those two commands today. Next week, I will be covering another episode, a hack tip for you for the Linux terminal. Until then, I wanna hear your feedback. What program or command are you using with printf? I would love to know. Hit me up, tips at hack5.org, and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technology. Last.